or let's say within an African American community and want to hire people to work there. And although they are prejudiced toward that group of people, they might have an economic gain. Their friend might be just as prejudiced toward that same ethnic group. And they might want to avoid and actually at their place of business put in a practice of not hiring that person to actually work there. They are being very discriminating. Mm -hmm. The point I want to make, according to Dr. Allport, is that both people are very prejudiced. Mm -hmm. One will act in one way and the other person will act in the other way, but they are both very prejudiced. Mm -hmm. This is why I want to try to make the observation that's going on in a political campaign mm -hmm. of an entire group of people that might have a leader that they are now saying, well, gee, there's, that person is saying something that I really think. Mm -hmm. And while at one point they may not have expressed it out loud, mm -hmm. now they are willing to show up and to express it mm -hmm. because there are those two types of people that might have a dislike for certain policies or other group of people but might act out their prejudice openly because they feel mm -hmm. that someone else is a billionaire or in a leadership role and can say and act in that way that so can I. And so in real sense, Dr. Sanford, <clears throat> as we get ready to end this segment this morning, we're saying that uh, prejudice has an impact yes. upon all of us. A person can either be prejudiced or not prejudiced, but mm -hmm. whatever his attitude might be, he's going to live within a community of folks that will have an impact. And, and, and we're going to talk this morning about some of the acts of uh, prejudice. Very and good. what we'll do, we'll take our first commercial break and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. He has these five different okay. acts of uh -huh. prejudice, and I want to kind of get through them. Mm -hmm. Then I want to be able to come back in that other segment and uh -huh. spend time and see how what's going on with groups uh -huh. of people who might belong to a police uh -huh. force that might be real cordial, might go to church to people, uh -huh. but they still might have that prejudice that attitude, that attitude mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they may not act in the church toward it, but they might be a police officer mm -hmm. and see someone and then act in that way. Okay, and, and, say, and what I have to do is to bring us back into this second segment yeah, yeah, okay, and let yeah, you yeah. give that out. Oh, you yeah, don't, right. don't want to confuse me with <laughs> too much information. Oh, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, just okay. those acts on prejudice. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, where you, that's where you ended that. Yeah, the acts on prejudice. Yeah, we're going to come back, we're going to hit it. Yeah, And I was hoping I did an okay job in setting up how you have two people, just in two different people. Yeah, well, that's, yeah, two different points. They could be friends and one. Uh -huh. We'll but act on it and Everybody is impacted by prejudice one way or the other. That's you it. You see, and yes. so either you are or you know some of your friends That's are. That's right. And, and you have to deal with that. Very good. <clears throat> All set? Well, Thank you and welcome back to the second segment of the show for today. The topic is Acts of Prejudice, Prescription for Racism, and the guest is Dr. E.K. Sanford from Tennessee State University. And Dr. Sanford, uh, during this second segment, let's give you an opportunity to lay out for our audience this morning some of the things that you consider to be acts of prejudice, and that will give us an opportunity to further lead this segment and then go into the next segment and develop some of the things that you're going to talk about during this segment. Okay. Yes, again, and, and a prejudice is a negative attitude that a person or a group of people might have toward another, a dislike. And as we stated in the last segment to kind of follow up um, just briefly, is that they might have this dislike and not really link that to the way they may think or feel or be unaware of it. Dr. Gordon Allport in his classic book entitled The Nature of Prejudice, he has five different levels of acts of prejudice. Mm -hmm. The first one he calls, it's a funny word, he calls antilocution. Mm -hmm. And antilocution is just a word that he means that a group of people may gather and they might hear someone and they might say, well, yes, I really believe in what that person is saying. Mm -hmm. And they might listen to it. They might um, come back to the second and third meeting about it. But they are not at that particular point willing to go out and to do anything other than just listen to it and agree to it. Now, the second level of an act on prejudice is that of avoidance. Dr. Gordon Allport said that a segment of that first group might 
go out and say, I want to avoid because I have a dislike toward another group and maybe to live someplace, maybe because I have financial, uh, um, financial assistance, I can live and not um, integrate with other people and I can desegregate myself, I can segregate myself from other people. That's avoidance, when you can just want to stay away from that other group. You have that dislike and that Don't negative attitude. Don't want to have anything to do with it. Don't have anything to do with it. Then the third level of it is that of discrimination. Now, and I want you to see that that second, you don't want to have anything to do with them, but you might not do anything negative against them. But that third level is a subgroup of people that might not want to have anything to do with the person, but they will actually discriminate against an individual. Find or themselves another group. in a situation where they have to deal with that group. Yes, is that what we're, uh, uh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Or if they have to hire or mm -hmm. if they are working in a particular place, they might see that a particular person is checked that they are put of a particular ethnic group and then they might do something that is discriminatory mm -hmm. toward that group. So that's, it, that's an act on prejudice because you in your mind have this attitude about a person that you may not even know but this dislike and you might act on it in a very discriminatory way. We can look at history and our laws that at one time said that people that of a certain ethnic group would have to live in a certain area, they couldn't go to certain schools and so an entire civil rights movement had to take place for those changes to come about. Even those that are listening might think, well, oh, institutions just always wanted to be fair in having athletics, but a, a movement had to go to have a certain title to be changed for women to have the right to play sports because they were discriminated against. So then he looks at the next level of acts on prejudice is that of physical attack. Okay. That's mm -hmm. when they have this negative attitude toward this other group that they're not only wanting to avoid and to discriminate, mm -hmm. but they're going to organize themselves to actually go out mm -hmm. and to then physically attack mm -hmm. another group. We might remember the dark history in America where the Ku Klux Klan may have gone out and burned um, crosses. houses mm -hmm. down, Tra crosses, mm -hmm. very intimidating. Mm -hmm. And that was a, a physical attack. Mm -hmm. And then the fifth level is called extermination. Mm -hmm. That's an act of prejudice where you're so racist toward another group of people, you target them mm -hmm. and try to really do away with the entire group. Mm -hmm. That's extermination. Physical extermination. Physical extermination, <coughs> mm -hmm. yes. You were just clearly trying to do it. And we can see that's the mm -hmm. reason of World War II, because mm -hmm. of what happened in Nazi Germany, mm -hmm. those types of things occurred. Mm -hmm. um, so we have those types of examples of acts of prejudice that is within our society today. Now, what I wanted to try to share that for is simply this. Presently, we have a reoccurring pattern that has exists within our society of different groups of people that might be a part of antilocution and they might work well with others, but when they go out into the workforce and they meet someone that might be a particular suspect, mm -hmm. something in the subconscious might move them from the antilocution to the whole idea of a physical attack. Mm -hmm. And then they might unwantingly shoot that person or kill that person. Mm -hmm. And they would see some things that really didn't happen to try to justify it. Mm -hmm. But this is the same type of incident when people get together and say, well, we're going to really go to a place in an organized way and do something mm -hmm. to some people. So now we are in a society where some people are feeling victimized Good. by this peculiarity of acts on prejudice that might be at the level of antilocution where they might do a little bit of the avoidance within the workplace mm -hmm. and stay away. And then people there might leave with a certain feeling mm -hmm. and that person that avoided might not think they did anything toward that other person at all. Mm -hmm. And then they might even have a little discrimination mm -hmm. that might be going on mm -hmm. in the workplace and everybody might meet and have a donut or coffee, but that person might get this feeling that they are not accepted. Mm -hmm. And now they will then have some of these acts of prejudice mm -hmm. where they might move to then do some physical attacks mm -hmm. because what they have personally felt is going on in their life that they went to school, they tried to assimilate, they learn the language of the dominant group. Mm -hmm. They're dressing like the dominant group and they're, not, and they're still not being treated fairly. Mm -hmm. And then they might go out and then be in a postmodernist age, have some thoughts about something they see mm -hmm. 
in cyberspace, mm -hmm. Facebook or whatever, that might make them make a decision to go out and do a physical attack mm -hmm. about some other attack that was done against them. Mm -hmm. So it becomes this kind of an integration of something that is going on that's an act on prejudice that moved into a physical attack by another person that might not think they did it, but they actually did it to that individual. And so in a real sense, Dr. Uh, we're saying that uh, sociologically, yes. that a person can uh, not have a prejudiced bone in, his, in yeah. his body, but his relationship with other folks, the kind of conversations that he becomes involved in can move him from that uh, first uh, act yes. up to the last act simply by the environment and the things that he hear that are said in reference to uh, that group of that individual. Is Absolutely. that what we're saying? Th that's what we are saying. And mm -hmm. we're not saying 100% of that group. Mm -hmm. We're saying that in that antilocution, mm -hmm. um, going back to if we can just observe mm -hmm. what's going on before us mm -hmm. in a national level uh -huh. at political campaigns, mm -hmm. how you might have an entire group that might get at the same group that would have done physical attacks. Mm -hmm. Number four, Ku Klux Klan, David Duke. Mm -hmm. Others that, that will show up because they are feeling depressed within the economic system that mm -hmm. they are in and they are all at the same place. Some will lash out while some will not. Okay, very good. And what we're going to do, we're going to take this uh, second commercial break and we'll be back with our audience following this very, very short commercial break. A, a situation yes. where he might run across that first stage yep. and that and, and by simply being in that being group that, yeah. uh, he can move from one stage yes, to up next. to another yes. from from uh, yeah. not knowing anything about him to, to now you want to kill him. Yes. Is that, that's yeah, it, yeah. That's I it. said that's, yeah. that's a real and progression. This, and, this, and this is what I'm seeing mm. with Donald Trump and his group. Uh -huh. See, I don't think anything is wrong with Donald Trump. I think he knows that that group is out there. Mm -hmm. And then when he says that, his foes keep going up and up. up and so he started using that language mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. over and over again. Make that's that as a point. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's yeah. a point. Make that's, that's a good point. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> <clears throat> Thank you and welcome back to the final segment of the show for today. The topic is Acts of Prejudice, Prescription for Racism, and we have with us to talk about Acts of Prejudice and the Prescription for Racism, Dr. E. Kelly Sanford from uh, Tennessee State University. And so, Dr. Sanford, let's see if we can uh, finish this last segment by uh, having you make, make some comments in reference to an individual who might be caught within that first act that you're talking about and as he or she moves up and eventually move to the fifth act in which they are ready to exterminate an individual. Go yeah. on, speak, speak yeah, okay. to it for the, from that perspective. And thank you very much. And, and that is indeed how Dr. Gordon Allport would see it. That, that first person that might have this feeling or dislike toward another group but wouldn't act on it mm -hmm. could be a potentially a part of going into membership or just going to a group and when things are being said they might listen to it and agree with it and mm -hmm. vote for it but a subgroup of that group might move on to the next level and then the next level to the next level of physical attack mm -hmm. where they might make a decision to go out and do it. Mm -hmm. Now this is where the prescription for racism of those earlier Mm -hmm. tax the listening audience need to understand mm -hmm. when that group of people start to go out and they seek out a group of people whoever they might be based on certain physical characteristics mm -hmm. or where they might be socially located within a community mm -hmm. that they know they are targeting that group of people or if in a hiring process they are not allowing a group of people based on the ethnic group that they have checked that they are or gender that, that they are then that's when the racism or the sexism enters into the discussion about the, the whole prescription of racism mm -hmm. within the society in which we live in. Mm -hmm. Now when we look in our larger problems of reoccurring patterns, 
of say police officers that are disproportionately mm -hmm. killing African American males, mm -hmm. I want us to keep in mind this act on prejudice because I think if we interviewed say any of the officers in the rank and file line, all of them would say, well, no, we would not go out and act toward any other citizen in any different way than we do would another person. Mm -hmm. But out of that group, you can have someone that in their private life would avoid mm -hmm. and then in their private life would do some discriminatory mm -hmm. acts. Mm -hmm. And this becomes a part of their subconscious, looking at the social psychology of it. Mm -hmm. And when they are out in the force and then when they are out to stop someone, that individual may not be doing anything that is being degrading or mm -hmm. not following the rules. Mm -hmm. Or even if they were not following the rules mm -hmm. and you have to shoot them, do you have to shoot to kill or could you shoot in the leg and they fall down mm -hmm. and then they couldn't do anything? But is there something in that physical attack that emerges mm -hmm. from how some of the preceding acts of prejudice mm -hmm. may have been in the environment as you grew up? that might cause you to then shoot to kill, mm -hmm. or after you're down, to continue to shoot 15 additional times. Mm -hmm. and, and, and so in a real sense, if you've got a, a group, uh, hypothetically, yes. of uh, 20 people, yes. and as they move from one stage yes. to another, you might uh, have only, what, 15 move up to that second stage, yeah. and then uh, 10 to that third stage, and uh, yeah. five to that uh, fourth stage, and that fifth stage in which there is an idea of extermination, yeah. you have only one or two That's out it. of those 20, but all might be considered to be what? Prejudice, Prejudice. but they've moved from one Prejudice. stage to another stage. Yeah, that's absolutely uh -huh. right. Mm -hmm. And now, as we are seeing this radicalization of other groups mm -hmm. that are probably experiencing within the society or system in which we live in, mm -hmm. some of those acts of the lesser stage mm -hmm. of prejudice, they may then start thinking how can I get back at that mm -hmm. by this physical attack? Mm -hmm. So, and then I guess my point is it can go from one ethnic group to the next mm -hmm. ethnic group, or I, I hate to use this word Uncle Tom, sometimes you can find people within one ethnic group uh -huh. that the dominant group can get another person to act and behave and think and say things in a certain way. Mm -hmm. I guess you want to say they've been bought out mm -hmm. or they may have assimilated to a certain degree that they may not, try to mm -hmm. understand that particular ethnic group, although they belong to mm -hmm. that ethnic group themselves. Mm -hmm. However, going back to this issue of the problem that we are seeing in our society today, many people that might be the victims of it are now turning that into another type of act on prejudice mm -hmm. and physically attacking. Mm -hmm. So I hate to date it, but as we have this conversation, there have been many types of attacks that have occurred in America and mm -hmm. throughout the other country. And some people in their minds may be acting this thing out in a more physical or to the point of exterminating mm -hmm. another group of people or the idea that another, even entire society, they could regardless of who is in the building, mm -hmm. if they are just called American, they want to get rid of them. Mm -hmm. So that's an extermination, an act on prejudice mm -hmm. as well. So, so do you, would, you, would you say, uh, uh, Dr. Sanford, that uh, many individuals do have an opportunity? It's really mm -hmm. a, 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 a decision that an individual has to make as to whether he is willing to move from level one to level mm -hmm. two to love to, to the final level that that is really an individual's uh, decision but it, it, it it's uh, sort of formed by the group itself yep. by the kind of folks that you're involved with is that would that the, be a correct assessment of that you? is very very correct and one of the things since we are in high education is to try to have diversity in education mm -hmm. so that that group that's because of legal segregation hundreds of years ago things are still pretty much that way today or people are, might still be separated and might have those attitudes that through a system of education mm -hmm. that they will change their attitudes mm -hmm. and values in a different way and we have indeed seen that mm -hmm. we've seen that with the millennials and how our Supreme Court now allows this discrimination that was going to a gay brothers lesbian sisters of being married now they, they changed that law mm -hmm. because there was a change in people's attitudes that were born in the 80s and the 90s mm -hmm. and so the same thing with the civil rights movement when there was an act of prejudice of discrimination as well as physical attack mm -hmm. was a social movement mm -hmm. that went on and on laws were changed and now 
supposedly there are improvements to the mm -hmm. point that we have a first African-American president, mm -hmm. two-term president. Mm -hmm. So we see change with the whole infusion, but you have to understand that those things are there. Mm -hmm. And this places someone in a high authority level to have to understand that much of the antilocution is still very present, that mm -hmm. first level within our society, of people just feeling in a very prejudiced way. Mm -hmm. And you can see within the political campaign that's going on at the very present time, when a person figures out there's a whole group of people, regardless of their, their education, economic status, they mm -hmm. might feel depressed or suppressed, and they might start thinking in a way, and then they go out and they meet and they rah-rah about it. So you can see some of the people with their flags up and everything that Ready might Ready to, to move them. to the next. That's right section yes, i mean it. next uh, step of, of yes. it and and so it's a, a thing of progression you it know is. and 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 if a fellow if a person can uh, exclude himself or get yes. away from that kind of thing he won't have an opportunity to progress but as yes. long as he is involved in the middle of it he goes up with the rest of the group that's is right. that what we're saying that's what we're saying and we think we have a better america uh -huh. with more diversity because we are strength in numbers strength mm -hmm. in everybody being along and mm -hmm. getting along and we have the institution of religion that's supposed to help everybody mm -hmm. have this type of ethic about mm -hmm. ourselves but the question becomes as um max weber would say in his classic book the protestant ethic mm -hmm. in the spirit of capitalism mm -hmm. how does capitalism prevent us from being able mm -hmm. to get along and, and and so in a real sense uh, uh, diversity yes. is the most important element uh, in terms of bringing people together and more diversified an, a, a group is, yes. then the less likely they are to be able to move from, they might move yeah. from uh, level one to level two, yes. but if there's quite a bit of diversity, they're not going to go up to level That's five. That's right. And, uh, and, and intellectual diversity. Uh -huh. you, can be, you can live in another area, uh -huh. but intellectually you have to understand Stand, about uh -huh. the culture of other people, uh -huh. and then that would let you have a, d a different level of respect. Mm -hmm. that you would not move into wanting to be discriminatory mm -hmm. because intellectual. That's why we want in schools to have a diversified curriculum mm -hmm. from kindergarten all the way through the 12th grade and through undergrad. So when if you lived in an isolated area, you still have some intellectual awareness mm -hmm. about diversity. Mm -hmm. and, and Dr. Semper, uh, we're getting ready to end this show for today, but let me thank you for bringing that excellent information because I think that it, it, it sort of demonstrates mm -hmm. some of the things that we see. The more people become involved involved yes. with discrimination, the more they are likely to not have any problems with mm -hmm. discrimination. That's but it. if they become involved with diversity, mm -hmm. they're going to become more what? Diversified. That's it. You see, that's and I think it. that that's that, that's good information and I appreciate it. And I thank you. And let me encourage our audience to uh, tune in again next week for another informative edition of comments. Thank you and good morning.